Hi everyone, and welcome, welcome to, uh, to another edition of my homebrew journey. Now, uh, originally I thought it was episode 50, but it's not, it's episode 49, and I was going to do something special. So the special thing is, I'm going to do an Imperial Stout. Um, that's 20C on the BJCP guidelines. I've absolutely, I will say, I've absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Um, so what I've done, though, is in my head, I've thought, let's build up the flavours. A bit like my old oatmeal stout, my Odinson, but um, we're just going to ramp it up a little bit. So what I've got is quite a few grains going, um, all different colours, lots and lots of layers of different colours. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of grains going. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do it in eight litres of water. <coughs> um, and then I'm just going to do normal recirculation, try and keep it at 64 degrees and see what I get out of it. Um, but I'm aiming for really high OG here. So what I've got is a Vincent Homebrew support, uh, store, support your local homebrew shops. And I've got myself some dry malt extract, where it's called dry spray malt. So it's a darkish colour. It doesn't matter because it's going to be a, a black beard, I don't care what colour it is really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash all my grains in there and then I'm going for a sort of final volume of uh, seven and a half litres. So I'm going to fill two demijohns and what I'm thinking is eight litres with two and a half kilos of grain is going to be quite high OG anyway and then when I take the grains out, it's going to absorb a lot of the water, so I'm not going to be left with much. And I'll need about nine and a half litres, I think, to get it down to seven and a half for the boil. Maybe nine litres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve the spray malt in water, uh, the right amount of water in the boil kettle, so I get my uh, an OG, and hopefully it'll be like 1080 or 1090 or something like that. Um, you know. It's all a bit mad and it's all a bit bonkers. Now I've been on uh, Beersmith, I've got my computer here, a bit of technology, and um, do you know, uh, it's quite complicated and it's not quite as simple as Brewer's Friend, but I'm going to stick with it for now. Um, so this is my recipe. Um, I have got 1.3 kilos of Maris Otter, 300 grams of Munich malt, 300 grams of Vienna malt, and then I have got 150 grams of Crystal 60, 150 grams of Crystal 150, 100 grams of Crystal 250, and then 50 grams of my pale chocolate malt. Um, and then I'm going to add in that dry malt extract after, afterwards. Um, now, IBUs for uh, uh, an Imperial Stout are really quite high, and I'm not a super fan of uh, super bitter beers, but you know, I'm giving it a go. Um, so for the uh, boil then, all I'm doing is hop additions at 60 minutes. So I'm going to do 20 grams of East Kent Goldings and my final 10 grams of my Challenger Leaf Ops, which has seen me through si at least six Odinson Stout. So there's my last Leaf Ops and uh, it's been good for me that old Challenger, it's been good. And that'll give, it says here, it's going to give me 46 IBUs. Um, it also says, let's go through the stats here. It says, estimated original gravity, uh, 1091. Boom. Um, if I can get it higher than that, happy days. Uh, bitterness, uh, 46. Colours, 35.8. And I've got a colour thing there, and it's basically this colour, so, which is great. An estimated ABV of 9.4. Oosh. Get in. Um, so my pre-boil gravity then, it wants 10.71. Wow. And hops wise, uh, I'm going to use uh, a half packet of Mangrove Jack M42 because I went to a local home brew store and it's proper knowledgeable. Get on to local home brew stores, proper knowledgeable people. And he said, uh, Mangrove Jacks M42, New World Strong Ale Yeast, bunk some of that in, ferment at 25C. Hmm, okay, so that's a bit off for me, but I'm going to do it. I've got set the ink bird up and what have you. And then I'm also going to put in uh, quite a, a reasonable amount of 
Unkvake, my Unkvake, because that'll work better at a warmer temperature. And I'm just looking at my water here, it's at 71 degrees at the minute, so we're nearly ready to mash in. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot to go wrong today, um, but there's also a lot to go right. Uh, and given that this is a, supposed to be a Russian Imperial Stout, um, this is a brew day for a beer called Twinkle Tsar. Let's get on with a match. There, you can see all the different colours of the grain. I've got some Vienna, some Munich, and then all the different crystals in there. Looks quite nice, isn't it? There's two and a half kilos of grain in here, so eight litres of water, um, which is, by any stretch of the man's uh, imagination, a lot. So, we have to give it a right good mix, get it all bunged in, give it a right good mix up. Very important now, now you use this bazooka filter, dump it in the middle, in there, and that'll let some water through for when I start putting all the pump and recirculation stuff on. Uh, so we're at, amazingly, 66 degrees, so I'm not going to put any more heat in it for now. I'll leave it for 15 minutes, that'll give me time to set all my nonsense up, all my pipes and my pumps, and then uh, I'm a bit ready to go, it's going to be great. Right, so we're at 5.5, which is absolutely bang on, no wax all needed. Um, I'm right happy with that. So, I've got 45 minutes left on the boil, and we're at bang on 64 degrees, so that's great. I'll just keep an eye on that. Um, and then I'm going to figure out what my losses are to the grain, and uh, mix the DMS in with as much water as I need, so I get 7.5 litres. So I need 9 litres in total, get down to 7.5 litres. Happy bunny. Um, should be interesting. Right, so what I've done is I've got my, thus whilst that's still going, I've got three litres of water in here and I'm going to heat it up a little bit, but I've added 500 grams of that uh, spray mop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick gravity reading of that and uh, see what it's like. Um, it's quite dark actually, which is fine. There's no bother. I've had to give it a bit of a stir as well because it was a bit lumpy. Um, but, you know, let's have a see what the gravity is. The gravity... <laughs> is... Hmm. Right, so the gravity of 500 grams of this spray malt uh, in 3 litres of water is 1067. Um, which ain't too bad. So that's pretty much where I need it to be. If that's slightly higher, if that's 1075-ish, then we sort of hopefully it'll balance it, balance it out, and uh, we'll have our pre-boil gravity of 10.71. We'll be getting up there uh, to 10.90, or maybe 1100. Ooh, we won't do that. 10.90 be great though. Um, and yeah, nine percent beer, brilliant. And whilst we've got about 10 minutes left in the mash, um, <coughs> I'm going to quickly go through the BJCP guidelines. 20C, an imperial stout, and it says overall impression is an intensely flavoured big dark ale with a wide range of flavour balances and regional interpretations. Um, roasted burnt malt with deep dark or dried fruit flavours and a warming bittersweet finish. Despite the intense flavours, the components need to melt together to create a complex harmonious beer. Not a hot mess. <laughs> which is something that I create more or less every brew day. Uh, that's still at 64 degrees which is great. Uh, aroma, rich and complex, as you'd expect with all these grains. Um, the roasted grains are going to give you sort of raisiny kind of flavours. Um, but hopefully, with the hops, you might get some fruity esters. Um, and it's all mixed in together. Grains, malt, esters, hops and the alcohol. And all that needs to be balanced. So that's quite complicated, that, isn't it? Um, could have some coffee flavours, some dark chocolate. Um, you could have some subtle uh, malt flavours, or it could be like a barley wine, it says. Um, may show some speciality malt character, fruity esters, could be low or moderately strong, so there's a broad range there. Uh, may take on the flavours of plums and prunes and raisins, like I just said. Hop aroma can be quite low or quite aggressive, so again, another broad range. So it's basically, as long as it's dark and 
uh, blow your head off with alcohol, you can put more or less what you want in it. Um, an alcohol character may be present but shouldn't be sharp, hot or solventy. Now the guy at the homebrew store said that I should, um, I should uh, ferment at 25 degrees. Mm. And I'm not sure about that. Um, I'd, I'd rather ferment at sort of room temperature-ish and see how it goes from there. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the balance can vary with any of the aroma elements taken centre stage. Um, not all aroma elements need to be present and many interpretations are possible. Age and effects intensity, balance and smoothness. So uh, my uh, Odinson Stout and my English Porter, <coughs> they've all had nearly two months now. Uh, and I don't plan on touching them anytime soon because um, it, it will get better and this is going to be the same. And if you look on um, Instagram or Facebook, any of the homebrew stuff there, people leave these um, beers for three months, six months, a year and come back to them. So I might do that actually, See, do a long term tasting of them because uh, I suspect it would be quite harsh at the beginning but it will mellow over time hopefully. Um, flavour, rich, deep, complex, frequently quite intense, very amounts of flavours from the malts and the hops and alcohol and stuff we've said over t uh, previously. Very full bodied and chewy mouthfeel. Uh, with a velvety, luscious texture, uh, although the body may decline with long conditioning, so no more than say six months maybe, that might be good. Uh, traditionally an English style, but it's currently much more popular and widely available in America, where it's a craft beer favourite and not a curiosity. Lots of variations, uh, traces its route back to strong English porters brewed for export in the 1700s and said to have been popular with the Russian Imperial Court. Um, the Polonic Wars interrupted trade and then they were sold mainly in England um, and the style of all but died out and so it's been revived recently in the American craft ale scene. Uh, Vital stats, IBUs 50 to 90, well mine's currently 69, I did a bit more beer smith shenanigans and it's 69. Uh, SRM's 30 to 40, mine's 38. OG of 1075 to 11.15, so anything in there I'd be really happy. Uh, final gravity 10.18 to 10.30, so that's quite sweet. And ABV of 8 to 12 percent, so no, anything in there, and uh, I'd be right happy. Um, the tag zen is the go, we've not done this BJCP thing for a while, but the tag zen it says a very high strength, dark colour, top fermented British Isles, North American, uh, traditional style, craft style. Stout family, malty, bitter, and roasty. Right, that's my uh, hour mashup, and there is look how dark that is. That is really, really dark. But I will say, it is really, really clean and clear. I can see me hand through the bottom of the jug there. So there we go. Uh, we'll give it uh, an OG test, and I've got to. Uh, you know, lift, lift my stuff out of the, my grains out there and let them drain for a bit, but give me time to put washing out. Um, but I'm right happy with that. And uh, let's quickly now go and see what our uh, gravity is. Right, I've transferred everything into my boil kettle. It's just warming itself up now. And my original gravity, <coughs> including the DMS, the three litres of DMS, is 1065, 1066. Now in here, I got three litres of um, water with half a kilo of DMS and I've managed to get 9.2 litres altogether so I only got six litres out of the mash ton so the grains took over two litres of water and you know it was two and a half kilos of grain. Um, efficiency is proper low, um, not good at all, I'll, maybe I'll check on Brewer's Friend and, and get back to you on that but for now 1065, um, I've got 9 litres, I'm going to let it boil for an hour, see where I get to, and I'm looking to get down to 7.5 and see what the original gravity is then, and now uh, we'll get a cool down and put into the demijohns. Right, I have got 13 centimetres of wort in there, and I've done a calculation, pi r squared, area of the circle, <coughs> blah de blah. If I'm to get 7.5 litres, um, I'm going to need to get it down to 11.3 centimetres, so I'm 60 minutes on the boil. There is 40 grams of hops, that's 25 of Challenger, 
and 15 of East Kent Goldings and uh, this should give me my 70 IBUs ish of, of um, bitterness so 60 minutes and let's see how that goes see you in a bit that's the boil over and uh, I put some whirl fuck in as well so I'm just about to get it cooled down and let's see what the gravity is Alexa stop let's see what the gravity is Okay, this is quite exciting. Okay, now I might just let it cool down for a second because I think it says 1089, which is holy jeepers, that's a lot. So if that was to get down to 1020, uh, 7, looking at 9% there, and uh, Wow. So let's get it cool down, let's get her into Jemmy John's and let's get her under stairs ready to ferment away. Okay, so I've got about six litres there, I think, and I'm right happy. Got three litres in each. Um, I let it cool down and I thought, oh, the work cooled down on the refractometer. I thought, well, oh, that's not right, it was a bit fuzzy. So I took another reading of fresh wort and it's at. 10.92 so you know that's going to be pretty strong um, it's already quite treacly I'm tasting it um, so you can see it's oxygenated I've got my uh, M42 uh, attenuation 77% to 82% mm, alcohol tolerance 12% so yeah, I could get it down to 10.20ish, 10.23 or something like that. I've got a bit of a wake as well, because this is at 24 degrees at the minute. And uh, I don't think I'm going to do it at 25 degrees like the bloke uh, suggested. Um, but I'm going to put a reasonable amount of this in to get it going. And then hopefully the mangrove jack will kick in after a couple of days and we'll get a pretty good attenuation from it all. Uh, anything else? There's a lot of hops in there. That's my Challenger hops gone. So I'll have to get some more of that. I did a whirlpool it, so you know it's all sorts of gunk in there. So if I get, if I get six liters, but if I can get ten bottles out of it, maybe lose half a liter in each bottle, each demijohn there, I'll be happy. Ten liters, and then uh, uh, ten bottles, sorry, and then that's a good um, number of bottles to allow to age. You know, we can do a few tastings on that. Uh, but you know, I'm right happy. I, I, I've got to say, I'm right happy. 1092, that's that's the highest I've ever had. Uh, I've never gone for really. So uh, I'm going to add my yeast now and I'm going to stick under the stairs in that there brewery and I'm going to say uh, that's it done for now. That's the brew day done. Twinkle Tsar, um, Tsar the first. Um, and as usual, uh, you can like and subscribe and you can leave a comment on the old old YouTube channel if you want, especially if you've done a an imperial stout and you've got something to say about what I've done and uh, you can also give us a follow and a like on the old Instagram at hashtag the homebrew journey or hashtag hands up if you love brewing and uh, that's it till next time and what have I got going for next time I've got a, a saison yeast so I'll keep an eye out for that video and uh, we'll see what happens with that but uh, for now why don't you go out and brew something imperial